He knew it was a dream, and his best friends were dead. But this didn't stop Sir Walter from stabbing them in the back, and from the grave nonetheless. He was acting heterosexual male from the old school, and when it came to women his ways were stealth. He knew his old buddies were dead, but they themselves did not know. As they sat in the VIP section of the old Bella Vila Cabana of Purgatory Shore. Hell, they thought they were in Acapulco with a beautiful brown eyed Mia between them. Might as well be. He knew the routine by showing no interest, acting like an asshole, asexual misogynist. He intrigued the cunt and turned those brown eyes dreamy. This friend sat in on at the time. He then lay down the shocker. You're both dead. I seen you both cold as ice, embalmed and sunken, lying in pine boxes with your family and friends boo hooing. And quite frankly, it was fucking pathetic. He hissed us as he visually probed across the table with piercing eyes, stopping and staring point-blank into his old buddy Christopher. You put a bullet in your head over some lame-ass white girl who played you for a fool. Yeah, you really showed her, fucker. You think she really cared watching you blow what little bit of brains you had out the side of your head? She didn't even show up for the wake or funeral. Instead, she shacked up with Dick and you're long gone, hanging around here trying to impress the natives. To you, it's just one long fucking night, my friend. And you, he pointed to his old partner, Leroy, growling even more angrily now that he was on a roll. You got drunk and hit a telephone pole, a fucking telephone pole. And on the straight road you traveled a thousand times before. You have you know how many fucking car wrecks I've been in? And if I hit a telephone pole I broke that fucker in half. Jesus Christ, you're such a fuck up. Your constant fear of death costs you big time, brother. The two accosted looked at one another and somehow I knew it was true. But we thought it only a dream, Christopher moaned, was in a state of shock, then downed a shot of brandy. Well, fuck the both of you, I'm out of here. He started off, then turned and looked the young Mexican beauty in the eye and said, I'll be at the bar, sweetness. If you want some real action, come on over. See Uncle Willie. Sir Walter laughingly strode through a crowd of clueless deceased and up to the bar. Bartender, give me a Corona and a shot of tequila. As the bartender laid out his beer and filled his shot glass, the young Mexican beauty walked up behind him. Am I dead too? she asked in a native tongue. Why, hell no, he spoke from the corner of his mouth as he lit his cigarette. Come with Uncle, and I'll show you how alive you really are. The two walked through a beaded doorway, past the dance floor, and up a staircase that led to a ran-down room, a Mexican hostel. At the top of the stairs, he laid down two American dollars on a desk, and the clerk handed him a key to room seven. On the way down the hall, the two stepped over junkies on the nod and past sinister-looking Mexicans who were waiting to catch young, naive American dead off guard. The whole time, Sir Walter kept his hand underneath his jacket, gripping his pearl-handled forty-five automatic, ready to shoot anyone if they so much reach out a hand in their direction. 
But the look in his eyes and the men of his walk, none dared mess with this loco gringo. Inside the room, he pulled off his suit coat, pulled his forty-five from his holster, and laid it on a table by the bed. He slipped off his shoes and sat back on the bed. Come to Uncle, he said. The pulsating bulge in his pinstripe suit pants began to grow. As she approached, she slipped the straps of her red silk dress off, and as it fell to the floor, her voluptuous young body stood bare and obscurely illuminated by the street lights that shone through one dusty window in the room. Come here, he said, as he pulled a cap of poppers from his pant pocket. He broke it and inhaled and offered it to her. She took off his pants. Suddenly her senses became extremely acute. Her whole body pulsated and the beating throbbed like electric waves. The breeze from a crack in the window caressed her naked thighs. The juices of anticipated fornication made the world and its worries disappear, as is, is the case when the living's desires were freely expressed. Only this time it was intensified over and over. Intoxicated by the aphrodisiac, Wally's little trick. She lay down on him and unbuttoned his shirt, kissing his hairy chest and lapping up the trail of musky sweat leading to his cock. The two moaned in ecstasy, their bodies writhing and intertwining as fireworks and gunshots filled the city streets just outside.